Hi, it's Aaliyah from The Song of the Winds. I hope you're doing really well. Today is episode three of the Crystal and Tarot Correspondences series. And today we're going to be covering Temperance, The Devil, The Tower and The Star. Let's dive right in. Card 14, Temperance. All things in moderation is a common theme of this card. And it's especially easy to see in the everyday witch tarot. There's fruit, veggies and water on one side and cupcakes on the other. And one has even fallen down and made a mess on the floor, but oh well. <laughs> even her response to that is tempered, and the cat isn't bothered either. In a lot of ways, this card is about walking the middle path. It's about avoiding extremes on either side, and it's, it's somewhat outside of the world in some ways. There's a magic to this card as well. It's about melding different elements together to create something new. This card will often appear for people when they're going through some type of personal transformation, and it's usually around a spiritual awakening of sorts. This card often resonates with people who feel they have encountered a guardian angel or a guardian spirit or an ancestral guide. And that is best depicted in the original Rider Waite tarot. And that has also been picked up and used in the Next World tarot. In some interpretations of this card, you will see uh, fire and water being mixed together. And that indicates that different qualities, different ingredients with its different properties, if they're mixed together in the right the right measurements they can actually become transmuted and connected in something new and even in this picture the water seems to be defying gravity somehow it's being poured but you have to pour pretty fast in order to keep the water up at that kind of level so there's a definite mastery in that sense as well in knowing how to blend things just right and that's where Larimar comes in. It's all about balance. It helps us feel calm, helps us speak from the heart, and it supports you in knowing what steps you can take next in life to get where you want to go. It balances and cools anger responses and fear. And that's often a deep-rooted issue around anger is fear. So you can act with grace and ease in your dealings with others and curb your own excessive negative impulses. And when that's possible, then true balance can be achieved. And next we have the Devil card. This is such a triggering card for a lot of people. Uh, all religious connotations aside, if you take religion out of it and what might have been taught to us as children, even just looking at it, it does give you that same sort of unsettled, familiar feeling of something being wrong, but you can't quite put your finger on on what or why it feels wrong. It also makes a lot of people feel like that feeling you get when yourself or other people are making bad decisions for themselves, but they just can't seem to stop it. I once read that the word devil is from the Greek word adversary, meaning that our worst enemy is often us. The next world tarot tackles it from such an incredible perspective. Literal deals with the devil can be seen here, short-term gain for long-term loss, such as making a deal with the KKK. I mean, does that sound familiar to you or what? And then there's people in the background, they're just standing idly by and they're watching terrible things happen politically. I think this is such a relevant, such a relevant modern day moving interpretation of the devil card. I, I think it's one of the best I've seen ever. The everyday witch tarot, it's unsettling, but in a different way. We can see a real threat at play and that temptation is coming from either side. And there's a warning with the cats. They're scratching at the characters, you know, legs like stop, stop, warning, danger. Um, and maybe that's our consciousness or maybe that's someone else that's trying to warn us against um, a poor choice. But whatever it is, we're, we're unsure and we're easily led and there might be dire consequences. And honestly, I think the fact that this devil guy is so damn creepy and has such a such a pedophilic sort of look about him that that adds to the overall feeling of this card. Initially, I wasn't too into it, but the more that I compare this to other devil cards... The more really interesting layers seem to come out. And the slow holo tarot, that comes about it from a different way. It makes us question who exactly the devil is. Who are we being told is the devil? Is it a woman? <laughs> is it a comment on the origin of the Christian Eve? Is it fashion and makeup companies telling us to alter our bodies and transform them into something palatable for the general public? Something that they should desire? As if our purpose is just to be consumed by others. Is it diet and, and surgery industries creating a problem where there is none? In some ways, this card makes me think about one of the best rebuttals to the expectation of babies being dressed in the color of their gender. <laughs> I read it once. I think it might have been a, a tweet. Someone was like, you want me to color code my baby so you know what their genitals look like? <laughs> it's absurd. Who is the devil? 
And sometimes the devil is so insidious and so ingrained in our culture, we don't even realize how damaging some of our social norms and expectations are. Spirit Quartz. It can help us where fear is present, and for most of us, fear is a driving factor behind almost every decision that we make. Consider FOMO, the fear of missing out, what drives PR and marketing campaigns. It creates a false sense of urgency to get something where there is really no urgency. The driving factor there is just the sales and profit that the companies obtain, and it can add to financial instability and create shopping addictions. There's the fear of being left out, such as with friends groups, and especially young and vulnerable people. Um, it can lead to a whole host of poor behavior like drugs and alcohol, risk-taking behavior like dangerous driving, um, you know, bullying, violence, crime, ris risky sexual behaviors. And then you add in the fear of being judged, embarrassed, failing, rejection. We humans have a lot on our shoulders. And if you could release yourself from subconscious fear, how different would your life be? Spirit quartz can come in uh, regular quartz or citrine or amethyst, possibly more, I'm not sure. <laughs> but the amethyst kind, like I have here, helps you with negative attachments and it's sent to repair trauma holes in the etheric body so your chakras and meridians can return to their optimum function. And this is really beneficial for anyone that struggles with, with those you know, urges and pressure in, in areas that we know are not going to lead us down a particularly nice path. But I'll just add on, as always, and with any crystal that I suggest here, they're purely for spiritual and emotional support. If you're really struggling with addiction and impulse control, you know, major fears that are impacting your life, please see a trained professional for assistance. I just like to mention that with the heavier type subject matter cards, because crystals are awesome, but they're not a doctor. The Tower. I love all of these cards, because they each tell their own story of the Tower in their own way. In the Slow Holo Tarot, we see the confusion and the turmoil and the conflict. It's a card that gives me a visceral reaction each time I look at it. It's deeply unsettling if I look at it for too long. In the Everyday Witch Tarot, it makes us question who is responsible for all of this. It's like, we did it. I mean, look at the cat cowering underneath the bush on the left hand side. Maybe we lit the match? Admittedly, I do have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this interpretation of the card because it doesn't work for every tower type moment. I can't imagine someone having that impish look on their face if a relationship broke down suddenly or someone died or they were abused in some way. It's a bit nice wash, but I do like the question that it poses. Maybe, maybe we're responsible for this tragedy that we're in right now. I know I don't pick up the right away Smith deck too often <laughs> because most people watching this are probably quite familiar with it, but I still think this is a really great tower card. It's a classic. It's it's sudden, it's unexpected, it's catastrophic, it's an act of God, the characters are frightened, they don't know what hit them. They put their trust in something not worthy of that much faith and they built themselves up so high and above others that they thought they were untouchable and have had a seriously rude awakening. And it's not clear how they're going to come out of this. In the next world tarot, it's more like, what's it going to take? What are we willing to let others take from us? What of our basic rights have to be stripped away before we act? This card seems to refer to the Dakota Access Pipeline process, but it can really be about anything fueled by greed, corruption, oppression. I love this interpretation of the tower because it moves us out of the me, me, me headspace that you often see with the tower, and it makes us consider the wider global implications. It's intensely political, and it's one of my all-time favorite cards. I just adore the next world tarot! Moldavite. It's rare, it's expensive, it's life-changing, it's the ultimate transformation stone. Uh, have a look on YouTube for people's experiences with Moldavite. It's just incredible because it rapidly propels us towards our greater spiritual destiny. It's when you trust in the outcome, the steps to get there can be much easily uh, accepted. So it helps you move through that, that shock and the reeling of what's happened to you and helps you trust in the outcome so that the steps to get where you need to go can be more easily accepted. But be warned with Moldavite, it'll crack you open like a nut and it's worth it in the end even if you can't quite see the lesson in it now. It's a bit like if you look back on a segment of your past and consider if those things as difficult as they were at that point in time, if they didn't occur or you didn't take that opportunity, you'd be at a significantly different place in your life right now. And finally for today, we have the star. It's a wonderfully abstract card and it can become whatever you want or need it to be in your personal situation. We can potentially take some cues from the temperance card here because the symbolism is quite similar. There's balance, especially in the sense of going inward and seeing outward balance. It's far easier if we are inwardly balanced. 
So self-belief is essential for happiness. If you were to experience tarot cards in a linear fashion, you've recently been tempted, you've been shattered, and you've been transformed. And now you can see hope and create your own opportunities. The message of this card is to approach things with an optimistic attitude and you'll be amazed at what happens. Each depiction of the star in these cards emanates a feeling of hope, positivity, radiance, peace, optimism, and expansion. And for the star card, we have Rainbow Moonstone. This is a raw piece. And it's all about joy. It helps us work through emotional trauma and uplifts your spirit and your physical energy. All of which would be quite valuable to you if you're trying to work on hope and bringing, bringing more positive things into your life. It helps remind us of the power and beauty in our individuality. And it's really valuable for those that continue to experience daily stress and have to interact with triggering and difficult people on a daily basis. So especially in the sense if you have come to the star card through, through all of the turmoil of the tower card and the temptation of the devil and all the things that come before it and you're finally beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel but you still have to put up with you know, people that are, are, not, are not helping you <laughs> in any way um, and are causing you a great deal of stress. Rainbow Moonstone is brilliant for that. And just to recap, if you're unfamiliar with these particular cards, we've got the Next World Tarot, the Everyday Witch Tarot, the Slow Holler Tarot and the Rider Waite Smith Tarot. And the crystals we looked at today, you've got Larimar, which corresponds with Temperance. You've got Amethyst Spirit Quartz, which corresponds with the Devil. You've got Green Moldavite, which corresponds with the Tower. And you have got uh, Rainbow Moonstone, which corresponds with the Star. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you've been enjoying this series. In the next video, we're going to cover the last four cards of the Major Arcana, the Moon, the Sun, Judgment, and the World. And from then on, we're going to jump into the Minor Arcana and break it down suit by suit. So I hope you'll stick around for that. And thanks so much to everyone who has left a comment on my earlier videos. It's really encouraging uh, with this series to have people enjoying what I'm putting out. It does take a bit of time to put them together because I do like to, uh, to write scripts because otherwise I completely forget what I, it is that I want to say and I end up having to publish a video that I'm not entirely happy with. So now I just do scripts. <laughs> so there's some time involved in doing them. So I really appreciate everyone that takes some time to let me know what they think. And until next time, see you soon. Bye.